Hello and uh, welcome to this very short Del Boy video. I thought it would be um, quite good to show you the other side of uh, when I do my uh, little videos, which are usually my blog videos or my gameplay history videos. So um, I've been trying to sort out space uh, and best efficiency and uh, I thought, right, let's uh, show you what I look at when I'm uh, doing my videos. So that's just a, a my favourite picture, which is just above my seat of uh, Spider-Man and the Green Goblin. Uh, very expensive uh, picture, which is signed by the artist. But if I move over here, you can see where most of the work is done. bit messy, but at the moment it's now very functional and I'm up to the point where I need to do some cable tidying. So if I just sit down, you can see my dual monitor display. This is the display I use when I'm just doing some video editing and just testing some emulation on games before I do it on my main PC. So I've got two monitors and below down here, I've got um, my editing suite, which is my i9 laptop, which has two graphic uh, chips inside there. There's a, an RX NVIDIA, and there is an Intel chip in there as well. It's a dual screen monitor, but I've also connected it up to the top monitor. Um, and uh, basically that's all touchscreen down there. Um, Behind the monitor setup, just behind here, is a strapped-on small form factor uh, HP laptop, which has an i5 processor in and 8 gig of RAM. Um, basically, um, that has two Windows operating systems on it. Uh, quite easy to switch on, which I'll do now, which is just to the right. And instead of booting into Windows 11, which is the current operating system on there, it boots into Barracetta, I believe it's called, which is just a front end. This sort of like speeds things up. That's it, Batacera. That just speeds up a few things in regards to the emulation. Um, what I'm aiming to do is put another 8 gig uh chip inside their memory chip because then that will make it dual channel um, because of its small form factor the wattage on it is quite low so uh, overclocking is not particularly great on it um, but as you can see I can move between my emulators I can click on my controller and I can go down to some of the games that are installed on there it's just a very simple front end um, and then we move to the right and we've got the main PC where I do my blogging and you can see the camera above and basically that's my G19 keyboard a bit um, needs a bit of a clean but basically um, that has a small display on it um, to help me with uh, CPU heatage processing power RAM and in certain games it displays maps that you're traversing all sorts of lovely stuff on there. It's a German version of the keyboard because I couldn't afford the UK one at the time. Um, but the letters are quite easy to understand. Uh, and then if I move to the right, you can see um, another monitor for this machine down here. And that is a Windows 8 machine uh, with an i7 processor in as well. Um, the XRK did connect to another machine, which is now... Um, I've now decommissioned um, and I'm just waiting for an adapter so that I can attach it to this laptop, this machine down here and I can then use MAME with a proper arcade stick. That's when I'll start doing my gaming history with proper controls. At the moment, just to give you an idea, um, that particular Xbox controller there is very old and the D-pad is just about gone. This particular controller here is newer was a recommendation by uh, a person on Discord. But unfortunately, 
Um, not particularly great build quality, I have to say, with this one. I think I was just unlucky. Nothing to do with the person that recommended it. Um, the triggers went within about four months. So where I've got one Xbox controller where the D-pad is starting to go uh, and drift on the analog left controller, this one has got a problem with the trigger controller. Um, it's not something I've looked into to find out if it's a major flaw, um, but of course um, it's now four or five months old. Um, it really isn't worth sending to uh, Amazon back. It's probably worth just spending more money uh, in regards to um, a better controller and don't buy such cheap stuff. These are my NAS drives that I'm just showing you there. Uh, this NAS drive at the top has got videos on it. The NAS drive underneath, which is far more expensive, is a Netscape, uh, sorry, a Netgear NAS Plus uh, uh, enclosure and has um, hard drives that you can slot in uh, through um, quick interface. You can basically just click the um, switches and they pull out rather than basically screwing them within the enclosure. To the right of that, we've got my old PS3 and just some games. And then we've got my uh, major TV environment, which has got my OLED TV, my PS5, my Blu-ray player, my surround sound amp, which is an Atmos amp, my PS4, uh, a Wii U, and basically an old multi-system DVD player. Um, which comes in really, really handy uh, when I want to look at some American films that I've got. Um, basically, that's my setup in a nutshell. The Amiga Mini that you see there is going to be moved and placed against this wall here where you can see I've put in a couple of cable holders and one cable clip which will enclose itself around and basically that is my setup um i hope that's sort of like giving you an insight into um my machines um a couple of things that i've decommissioned at the moment are underneath here that's my a3 scanner and my um my printer um but basically uh, they're not in use much. So they've been moved from the top to underneath. And uh, yeah, that's about it. Um, I might give some specs around the screen. Uh, and look, I hope we look forward to me doing some more blogs and uh, some more gaming history will be out as soon as I possibly can. Um, I'm just doing some tidying at the moment. It's not like I'm not working it's just i want to be slightly more efficient and uh slightly cleaner in my approach uh but i hope this video is sort of like giving you a a little bit of an insight into my work environment and uh see you on the next one bye bye